how good an actor he was. I found out later he was quite a, quite a uh, wonderful actor who excelled in the, uh, the element of simplicity. But um, because he was one black and then blacklisted because of his his involvement with labor unions and so on during those those years, um, he 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 just didn't get work. Certainly not in what in areas that Red Channels controlled, which was movies and t television. He got work occasionally in theater, you know. And he told me when I finally met him, uh, he said, "I've not been able to make a living at this, so I want you to know that's a possibility. That if you you, you don't enter it for the money, you enter it because you love doing the work." And uh, so I, I had that that reality uh, orientation. And I've, I've never looked, looked, looked at it as a romantic place or as a place to make big bucks. Perhaps, perhaps I should have. I, I'd, have been, I'd been richer if I had gone for the, <laughs> for the, with the bank, you know. Uh, but no, I, I, and also I've, I've applied that, that contentment um, uh, measure. Uh, uh, I was as, as content off-Broadway as I was in, in, in a big Hollywood movie. I just try to be content wherever I am, you know, and it it, it doesn't solve anything. It just it, it just makes you able to move uh, from one. I think um, I was told yesterday by some wonderful, brilliant mind that I met on a path out here. Churchill said, "Success is moving from one failure to the next with undiminished enthusiasm." Well, that. <laughs> Uh, that that's what I was able to do from my er early. <laughs> and, uh, so not, nothing threw me really, and nothing embittered me, which is important because I think ethnic people and, and 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 women in this society can end up being embittered because of the the uh, the lack of affirmative action, you know? uh, or, or the lack of, of removal of those uh, those ceilings, those glass ceilings. Uh, and I, I never, that never happened to me, and I, I feel blessed. I, I'm a healthier person because of it. I can pass on a healthier state of mind to my son because of it. You know. When I was finally allowed to see him, and I mean legally, I, I, I was, it was banned. I, I was not just, until I could decide for myself, uh, I, um, there was such animosity between uh, th those two families. And... Uh, uh, it, it's still unresolved. It, it will never be resolved with my father. I, I had, had a meeting with him just a few days ago, and it's, it's, it's a mess. You know. But I accept that. He doesn't seem to accept it. You know, he wants to still sort it out. He wants to place our, he wants to place him and me and my son into some sort of galaxy, and I, that that's that's a sign of romanticism, and I I, I don't care for it. You know. Uh, Family relationships are, are come from real, uh, real bonding, not not from something imagined or, or a, a presumption about genetic you know, inheritance. You know. and, uh, yeah, it has to be real, and I and I think the, a lot of problems we ha a lot of the problems we have as a society is because we don't acknowledge that family is important, and it has to be people who are present. You know. And uh, and mothers and fathers both are not present enough with with children. I'm I'm not present enough with with, with my son. You know, I'm I'm here and he's there. You know, often that's the case, and uh, and that's a problem. You know, and, uh, you don't build a bond without being present. <laughs> it was as it should be. Uh, I, I I was not because of my father's or, orientation. I, I I was not. I, I did not expect anything. Uh, no one asked me to be an actor, so no one owed me. There was no entitlement. Still is not. It is one one. I think the arts in general. No one asked you. They might ask you to be, to fly an airplane. They might ask you to uh, to raise wheat, but they don't ask you to sing a song. That is still considered in this society. Uh, uh, one of those um, elitist or luxury uh, uh, in endeavors, you know. So the idea that uh, you are essential has not, has not occurred yet. I think with the, with the lack of appreciation for the National Endowment, it seems that it may never occur in my time. Uh, but I think someday it, it must occur because it does occur in, in all great societies uh, all over Europe and uh, in England. Uh, the arts are, have always been an important ingredient to the health of a, a, of a nation. 
but we haven't gotten there yet. And and so actors have to have to accept that that you know we um no no one asked us. So the idea of not getting work that's the, that's part of the territory. I happened to land in a time in the in the middle sixties that without knowing it and without being told by the theater the, you know the the history of theater which which we now see from a historical point of view was an explosive time uh I got out of the army uh in in my in my world I came to New York for instance and uh, uh the civil rights movement was just beginning and uh that created a certain energy a certain rumble a certain impetus for for black black actors <clears throat> and the, and the, and the, and the the game was not to get caught up in it not not to get swept away by it away by it but to keep on 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 track of what you wanted to do uh, you you weren't going to the theater to to change the world you uh, but you had you had you had an, a chance to affect the world the thinking and the feelings of the world Athel Fugard one of the early playwrights that I, that I encountered in those days uh, always said he doesn't assume, and he, he was talking about South Africa then, apartheid South Africa. He never assumed that he could change anybody's mind, but he knew if he was good enough, he could change their feelings. And their feelings would affect their minds, you know, hopefully. And that, that, that's all we, we, we can expect in terms of missionary work, you know. Um, but I, I think it, it was more, it was more a, a, an, an unusual time than, than, and than any given person. And in that time, I did meet Ethel Fugard, um, and uh, and I and I met the whole avant-garde world. Uh, in, in England, it was referred to the, the angry young men period. Uh, in Europe, it was um, avant-garde, and we were uh, theater, theater of the absurd. Uh, put together, you saw in, in, internationally theater now being available to the proletarian that anybody could be an actor. You didn't have to have the elite family background of the Barrymores. The, the door was open for Marlon Brando, you know, real common man. And when Marlon did his work, when he did his Stanley Kowalski, every truck driver in New York said, hey, I could do that. That's me. I could do that. And that was very important. It was a very, very important movement, the I can do that movement. You know? <laughs> and I was a part of that. So that, that included... Women could play men's roles, and blacks could play white roles, and, and truck drivers could play Marlon Brando roles. And it was, uh, I think that's, that's what sort of opened life up for me, and opened that, that artistic life up for me. I knew actors who, at, at, at that time, were better than I was. Uh, one in particular who was so frightened by his own talent, he would only go to auditions drunk self-destruction. And uh, I think uh, on the other end, there are actors who were not as good as I was, perhaps who, who could have hung in too, but began to blame everything on race. You know, I mean, if they're, if they're black or you know, whatever, uh, minority race. Uh, and I did none of these things. I, I, I sort of, I can say straight, you know, and square, very, very square, but always uh, able to walk straight line, you know, toward Toward my 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 goal, toward it. Not the goal was not really important. The goal wasn't to be a millionaire or to be a Hollywood star. That was not the goal. The goal was something about uh, it was the goal was to find to find the goal. But I knew where it was. It had to do with getting on that stage and finding better and better uh, plays, and hopefully movie scripts to do. You know, to be a part of good storytelling. That that the goal was about that. You know. Um, and no, no, nothing threw me off, uh, and neither poverty nor, nor uh, uh, discouragement. Uh, um, nothing threw me off. It was, I, really, I didn't know Churchill's uh, theory then, but uh, I, I lived it. Acting is not about anything romantic not even fantasy, even though you, you do create fantasy. It's not about that. It's simply about something very, very concrete. Um, a, a playwright conjures a, 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 a vision of a world. 
and he interprets that world through words. You then take those words on stage or on a screen and try to bring it alive. Try to bring it alive by the inner interrelations between one character and another and what they say to each other. In movies, it's less important what they say. It's how they behave. It's about that. So when a young man yesterday from Chapel Hill asked me, uh, you know, he said he was, he's determined to be the best actor in the world, where do I go? <laughs> Oh, he, oh, he used the phrase dream. He said, I have a dream of being the best actor in the world. And I said, if you can tr turn that dream to imaging, you can image yourself, imagine yourself, and, and then achieving it, being able to plumb the depths of human feeling as much as Marlon Brando is able to. And then on the other end, in, in technique, um, find clarity and uh, brilliance of language as much as Richard Burton did, then uh, you, you might be the best actor in the world. But it's, it, it's doing real things. It's not nothing, nothing about uh, fan, fantasy. Well, oh, setbacks, yeah. I mean, there, there were specific ones, but they, again, uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't diminish my enthusiasm. Uh, being told one day that I had a job, my, my first job in a TV series, the next day to walk, go to a party and find a year, and another act, act, young actor said, he has the job, you know. Well, somebody had lied to me, um, the producer had, you know. Uh, but that, 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 that was a game, you know. And then I learned that game could be even more vicious if, if you let it, you know, if, you, if you feel it that way, you know. Uh, deception. And the idea that you're competing with your, with fellow human beings can get rough. My wife knows actresses who, when when they go to auditions, they will deliberately distract all the other actresses. They'll start telling stories. They'll start asking questions deliberately to throw you off uh, your balance. Well, I don't like to hear about stories like that. I and I, I certainly don't don't like to. Uh, my, my first first time on camera was with a, with a wonderful actress named uh, Diana Sands, and Diana began to try to tell me, my my first time on camera, she began to try to tell me, look, you know, if you if you want them to use your take, then you do something that distract the other actors' take. And I said, you know, I don't think I want to know that. I don't think I want to be that busy manipulating. Because I came here to act, you know. And if I use all my energy manipulating, I'm not going to do my job. And there was something very disturbing about all that, you know. She was a brilliant actress and could do both, you know, could, could m manipulate as well as do, do her job. But, but I, I didn't think I could do that, you know. Oh, oh no, you don't, you don't have self-doubt. You don't have fear of failure. If you do, you got to take care of it. But if if you if your goal is if your if your if the way you you approach your goal is 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 right for you, then you won't have self doubt. You know, literally, uh, undiminished enthusiasm always stays with you. If if you you're the only person who can tell what, whether you have talent or not, and there's a, a certain point where you got to be really honest with yourself and say, yeah, I do, and I'm going on, or no, I don't. And uh, your parents can't do it for you. Your critics can't do it for you. Once you determine that, then there should be no room for doubt. You know? There should be, there is room that, well, maybe this isn't um, the right role for me. And that's always going on, you know. You're told no every day, you're not right for this role. And they might say, because you're too tall. They usually don't know why you're not right for it. It just, you didn't, you didn't ring a bell for them, that's all. And that's okay. You got to ex accept the fact that you don't ring a bell for everybody. There's only one actor I know who does it, Morgan Freeman. He, he can ring a bell on the drama side, on the comedy side. He, he, you know, it's rare for this, this young actor to miss uh, in terms of the way he achieves his work, and it's also rare for him to, to miss in his character. Uh, whatever he does, it always seems to work in his character, you know. Well, that's very rare, and most of us don't, don't have that going for us, you know. Uh, and we will, we will fail to ring somebody's bell, and that's okay. Uh, when I first came into the theater, um, I followed Sidney Poitier's generation, which was not, not far ahead of mine, a couple of years. But he had established the height, 
And for the rest of us, we were there to establish the breadth of what young black actors.